Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I'm actually in a little bit of a different location than usual. Um, as many of my friends know, I tend to travel quite a bit, and so we are in the middle of a little bit of an adventure there. So, I'm not sure how well the audio quality is tonight. Um, if you do have any issues, please, please, please let me know. Um, I definitely would like to hear from you. Uh, I see Joe's is already in the chat. Hello, it's good to see you. Um, and on that subject, you can now see me too. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had uh, gone through the adventures of Winnie the Pooh last time. And uh, this particular episode might be a little bit on the shorter side. Um, I have some other things that I might get called away to, but I don't know for sure if I'm getting called away. So we'll have to find out. Um, but in the meanwhile, I think it's time we return to the Hundred Acre Wood. Oh, hello, Zoe. Good to see you here in the chat there, dearie. Um, actually really excited to have you around. So thank you for dropping in. And uh, let's see here. Just going to make sure I've got everything ready here. Oh, and apparently I got an offline follow. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right. So... If nobody else has anything they want to uh, get started with here, I think we will just hop into it. Uh, <laughs> as much as I would love to take you along with some of these things, uh, they are going to require me to be talking to some of the people that are uh, part of my real life. And I do try and separate my online and real life just a little bit here. Um, uh, so as a result, there's... Uh, it's not really something that I can take you guys with me on. But hello, Naruto. Thank you for dropping in. Rage, good to see you. I uh, hope you're all excited for the next part of this story. Um, and like I said, is uh, are, can you guys hear me okay? Because I know uh, the sound quality can be a little bit weird in this room. So, uh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Fair enough, Naruto. Clearly, I don't actually exist. I'm just in your imagination. As is the Hundred Acre Wood. Chapter 6, in which Eeyore has a birthday and gets two presents. Eeyore, the old grey donkey, stood by the side of the stream and looked at himself in the water. Pathetic, he said. That's what it is. Pathetic. He turned and walked slowly down the stream for 20 yards, splashed across it, and walked slowly back to the other side. Then he looked at himself in the water again. As I thought, he said, no better from this side, but nobody minds. Nobody cares. Pathetic. That's what it is. That is a very sad donkey, and I just want to give the donkey a hug. <sighs> there was a crackling noise in the bracken behind him, and out came Pooh. Good morning, Eeyore, said Pooh. Good morning, Pooh Bear, said Eeyore gloomily. If it is a good morning, which I doubt. Why, what's the matter? Nothing, Pooh Bear, nothing. We can't all, and some of us don't. That's all there is to it. This is both a mood and very sad. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Can't all what? said Pooh, rubbing his nose. Gaiety, song and dance. Here we go round the mulberry bush. Oh, said Pooh. He thought for a long time, then asked, uh, What mulberry bush is that? Bonhomie, French word meaning bonhomie. I'm not complaining, but there it is.
Pooh sat down on a large stone and tried to think this out. It sounded to him like a riddle, and he was never very much good at riddles, being a very, very little brain. So he sang Cottlestone Pie instead. Cottlestone, Cottlestone, Cottlestone Pie. A fly can't bird, but a bird can fly. Ask me a riddle, then I'll reply. Cottlestone, Cottlestone, Cottlestone Pie. That was the first verse. When he finished it, Eeyore didn't actually say that he didn't like it. So Pooh very kindly sang the second verse to him. Well, that that's pretty much my take on most things, so... Here we go. Coddlestone, coddlestone, coddlestone pie. A fish can't whistle and neither can I. Ask me a riddle and I'll reply. Coddlestone, coddlestone, coddlestone pie. Eeyore still said nothing at all, so Pooh hummed the third verse quietly to himself. Coddlestone, coddlestone, coddlestone pie. Why does a chicken, I don't know why. Ask me a riddle and I'll reply. Coddlestone, coddlestone, coddlestone pie. That's right. Sing um tiddly um ti too. Here we go gathering nuts and may. Enjoy yourself. I am. Some can. But why? What's the matter? Is anything the matter? You seem sad, Eeyore. <laughs> this is the same music as usual, Naruto. I did turn it up a little bit more, though. Are you able to hear it over my, uh, or are you able to hear me over it, I should say? <laughs> I can try and pick something a little bit more chill, but, uh... Sad? Why should I be sad? It's my birthday, the happiest day of the year. Your birthday? Said Pooh in great surprise. Of course it is. Can't you see? Look at all the presents I have. He waved a foot from side to side. Look at the birthday cake. Candles and pink sugar. Who looked first to the right, and then to the left. Presents? Birthday cake? Where? Can't you see them? No. Neither can I. Joke, but... He explained. <laughs> Who scratched his head, being a little puzzled by all this. But it really is your birthday? Who asked? It is. Oh! Well, many happy returns of the day, Eeyore. And many happy returns to you, Pooh Bear. But it isn't my birthday. No, it's mine. But you said many happy returns. Well, why not? You don't always want to be miserable on my birthday, do you? Oh, I see, said Pooh. It's bad enough, said Eeyore, almost breaking down. Being miserable by myself, what with no presents and no cake and no candles and no proper notice taken of me at all. If everybody else is going to be miserable, too. This was too much for Pooh. Stay here, he called to Eeyore as he returned and hurried back home as quick as he could. For he felt that he must get poor Eeyore a present of some sort at once. And he could always think of a propter one afterwards. Outside his house, he found Piglet jumping up and down trying to reach the knocker. Hello, Piglet. Hello, Pooh. What are you trying to do? I was just trying to reach the knocker. I just came round, 
Let me do it for you, said Pooh kindly. So he reached up and knocked at the door. I have just seen Eeyore, he began. And poor Eeyore is in a very sad condition because it's his birthday and nobody has taken any notice of it. And he's very gloomy. You know what Eeyore is. And there he was. And what a long time, however, lives here is answering the door. And he knocked again. But Pooh, it's your own house. Oh, said Pooh. So it is. Well, let's go win. So in they went. The first thing Pooh did was to go to the cupboard and see if he had quite a small jar of honey left. And he had, so he took it down. I'm giving this to Eeyore, he explained, as a present. What are you going to give? Couldn't I give it too? From the both of us. No, that would not be a good plan. All right, then I'll give him a balloon. I've got one left for my party. I'll just go and get it now, shall I? That, Piglet, is a very good idea. It is just what Eeyore wants to cheer him up. Nobody can be uncheered with a balloon. So off Piglet trotted, and in the other direction went Pooh with his jar of honey. What a kind bear. It was a warm day, and he had a long way to go. He hadn't gone more than halfway when a sort of funny feeling began to creep all over him. It began at the tip of his nose, and tickled all the way through him and out the soles of his feet. It was just as if someone inside him were saying, Now then, Pooh, it's time for a little something. Dear, dear, said Pooh. Oh. Hello, Yuna. It's good to see you. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, yeah, it has been a while. But I certainly hope you're going to enjoy the story here. Uh, we're just reading through the adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Dear, dear, said Pooh. I didn't know it was as late as that. So he sat down and took the top off his jar of honey. Luckily, I brought this with me, he thought. Many a bear going out on a warm day like this would never have thought of bringing a little something with him. And he began to eat. Oh no, he's eating the present for Eeyore. Oh, Pooh. Now let me see, he thought as he took his last lick from inside the jar. Where was I going? Oh yes, Eeyore. <laughs> ah... Gotcha. I'm sorry, that's kind of rough for you there, Yuna. And then he suddenly remembered he had eaten Eeyore's birthday present. Oh, bother! What shall I do? I must give him something. <sighs> oh, for a little while he couldn't think of anything. Then he thought, well... It's a very nice pot, even if there's no honey in it, and if I washed it clean and got somebody to write a happy birthday on it, Eeyore could keep things in it, which might be useful. So, as he was just passing the Hundred Acre Wood, he went inside to call on Owl, who lived there. Good morning, Owl. Oh, good morning, Pooh. Many happy returns of Eeyore's birthday. Oh! Is that what it is? What are you giving him, Owl? What are you giving him, Pooh? I'm giving him a useful pot to keep things in, and I wanted to ask you... <laughs> okay, see you back in a moment, Joes. Do you want me to wait for you? I'll give Joes just a moment to answer there. And while that's going on, I'm going to take a sip of water. Hehe, <laughs> sneaky. And we'll just continue right on. Is this it? Said Owl, taking it out of Pooh's paw. Uh, yes, and I wanted to ask you- Somebody has been keeping honey in it. You can keep anything in it. It's very useful like that, and I wanted to ask you- You ought to write a happy birthday on it. 
That's what I wanted to ask you. Because my spelling is wobbly. It's good spelling, but it wobbles, and the letters get in the wrong places. Would you write a happy birthday on it for me? It's a nice pot. Couldn't I give it two? From both of us. No, that would not be a good plan. Now I'll just wash it first and then you can write on it. Well, he washed the pot out and dried it, and while Owl licked the end of his pencil and worded, wondered how to spell birthday. Can you read, Pooh? There's a notice about knocking and ringing outside my door which Christopher Robin wrote. Could you read it? Christopher Robin told me what it said, and then I could. Well, I'll tell you what this says, and then you will be able to. So Owl wrote, and this is what he wrote. Hippie puppy birthday birthday. Who looked on admiringly. I'm just saying a happy birthday, said Owl carelessly. It's a nice long one, said Pooh, very much impressed by it. Oh, actually, of course, I'm saying a very happy birthday with love from Pooh. Oh, congratulations, Yuna. I'm delighted you've had a chance to experience that. Naturally, it looks a good deal of pencil to say something long like that. Oh, I see. While all this was happening, Piglet had gone back to his own house to get Eeyore's balloon. He held it very tightly against himself so that it wouldn't blow away, and he ran as fast as he could so as to get to Eeyore before Pooh did, for he thought that he would like to be the first one to give him a present, just as if he had thought of it without being told by anybody. And running along and thinking how pleased Eeyore would be, he didn't look where he was going and suddenly put his foot in a rabbit hole and fell down flat on his face. Oh no, the balloon popped! Bang! Piglet lay there, wondering what had happened. At first, he thought that the whole world had blown up, and then he thought that perhaps only the forest part of it had, and then he thought perhaps only he had, and he was now alone in this moon or somewhere and would never see Christopher Robin or Pooh or Eeyore again. Hello, Easy Bean, and thank you for actually dropping in. It's good to see you. I'm sorry Twitch is being wonky on your phone, Joes. And Yuna, that's quite nice. Congratulations. Well, even if I'm in the moon, I needn't be face downwards all the time. So he cautiously got up and looked about him. He was still in the forest. Well, that's funny. I wonder what that bang was. I couldn't have made such a noise from just falling down, and where's my balloon, and what's that small, damp piece of rag doing? It was the balloon. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dearie, 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 dear. Well, it's too late now. I can't go back, and I haven't another balloon, and perhaps Eeyore wouldn't like this balloon, doesn't like balloons so very much. So he trotted on rather sadly now, and down he came to the side of the stream where Eeyore was, and called out to him, Good morning, Eeyore! Good morning, little piglet. If it is a good morning, which I doubt, not that it matters. Many happy returns on the day! Duct tape? What for, Naruto? said Piglet, having gotten closer. Eeyore stopped looking at himself in the stream and turned to stare at Piglet. Just say that again. Many hap- Wait a moment. Balancing on three legs, he began to bring his fourth leg very cautiously up to his ear. I did this yesterday, he explained as he fell down for the third time. It's quite easy. It's so I can hear better. There, that's done. Now then, what were you saying? He pushed his ear forward with his hook. 
many happy returns of the day. Oh, duct tape for the balloon. <laughs> I have no idea why that might work, but okay. Give it a try, I suppose. Meaning me? Of course, Eeyore. My birthday? Yes. Me having a real birthday? Yes, Eeyore, and I've brought you a present. Eeyore took down his right hoof from his right ear, turned around, and with difficulty put up his left hoof. I must have heard that in the other ear. Now then. A present. Meaning me again? Yes. My birthday still? Yes, of course, Eeyore. Me going on having a real birthday? Yes, Eeyore, and I brought you a balloon. Balloon? Said Eeyore. Did you say balloon? One of those big colored things you blow up? Gaiety, song and dance. Here we are, and there we are. Yes, but I'm afraid... I'm very sorry, Eeyore, but when I was running along to bring it to you, I fell down. Dear, dear, how unlucky. You ran too fast, I expect. You didn't hurt yourself, little piglet? No, but I... oh, Eeyore, I burst the balloon. There was a very long silence. My balloon? Said Eeyore at last. Piglet nodded. My birthday balloon? Yes, Eeyore. Here it is, with, with many happy returns on the day. And he gave Eeyore the small piece of damp rag. Is this it? Piglet nodded. My present? Piglet nodded again. The balloon? Yes. Thank you, Piglet. You don't mind my asking, but what color was this balloon when it was a balloon? Marto, that is, uh, that's, that's quite the statement. Um, oh my. Red. I just wondered. Red. He murmured to himself. My favorite color. How big was it? About as big as me. I just wondered. About as big as Piglet. My favorite size. Well, well. Piglet felt very miserable and didn't know what to say. He was still opening his mouth to begin something and then deciding it wasn't any good saying that when he heard a shout from the other side of the river and there was Pooh. Many happy returns on the day, called out Pooh, forgetting that he had said it already. Thank you, Pooh. I'm having them, said Eeyore gloomily. I've brought you a present, said Pooh excitedly. I've had it, said Eeyore. Pooh had now splashed across the stream to Eeyore, and Piglet was sitting a little way off, his head in his paws, snuffling to himself. It's a useful pot. Here it is, and it's got a very happy birthday with love from Pooh written on it. That's what all the writing is. And it's for putting things in. There! When Eeyore saw the pot, he became excited. Why, I believe my balloon will go in that pot. Oh no, Eeyore, balloons are much too big to go into pots. What you do with the balloon is you hold the balloon. Not mine. Look, Piglet. And as Piglet looked sorrowfully round, Eeyore picked up the balloon with his teeth and placed it carefully in the pot, picked it out and put it on the ground, and then picked it up again and put it back carefully. 
So it does. It does go in. So it does. And it comes out. Doesn't it? It goes in and out like anything. I'm very glad that I thought of giving you a useful pot to put things in. I'm very glad that I thought of giving you something to put in the useful pot. But Eeyore wasn't listening. He was taking the balloon out and putting it back in again, as happy as could be. And I didn't give him anything? Christopher Robin asked sadly. Of course you did. You gave him... Don't you remember? A, a little... A little... I gave him a box of paints to paint things with. And that was it. Why didn't I give it to him in the morning? You were so busy getting his party ready for him. He had a cake with icing on the top and three candles and his name in pink sugar and... Yes, I remember, said Christopher Robin. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think that was quite the cute way to handle that. A lovely presence, at least from intention. And he got exactly what he needed out of it. I think the folks in the Hundred Acre Wood are going to do all right. <laughs> hmm. So, how's everybody doing there? <laughs> Alright, sleep well, Zoe. It's a good thing we're doing bedtime stories at this point. I hope you have a fantastic night, and thank you for dropping in as long as you did. <laughs> Where's Tigger? Uh, you know, I haven't seen Tigger come up yet. Uh, but we are only about seven chapters into the first book, and, uh... So the original series of stories, there were several books too. Um, this is actually fairly long. <laughs> I'll catch you then, Zoe. But yeah, it's, uh, Ooh, excuse me. Uh, no, uh, Tigger has not shown up yet in the stories here. Oh, uh, just a moment. So, as I had mentioned previously, um, at the start of stream, unfortunately there are some real life things going on, and I am going to need to take care of a few of those now. So, thank you everybody who tuned in, um, but unfortunately we are going to have to stop the stream here. Um, if I have a little time later on, I might try streaming again just to finish things out. Uh, but for right now, thank you to everybody who joined in. Um, I don't really have time to set up a raid, so we will simply end things here. But I appreciate all of you for coming by. Have a wonderful time, and I hope to see you again soon.